There are many people who say, yeah, I'm a Christian. I say, well, are, are, are you a believer? Do you, are, do you, are, are you a Christian? Yeah. Do you believe? Yeah, I believe. Great. Great. But they don't follow the Lord in all the areas of their life. You see, to be a Christian means to be a follower of Jesus. It means get in the yoke. Stay with him. Of course we're not perfect. Of course we, I don't know what the image would be, fall out of the yoke, trip and fall, and he's got to drag us along. You make the picture in your mind, but the point is, I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about following. Who are you following? Belief. Christian belief is not just a mental attitude. It's a lifestyle. It is, what shall I do? In this situation, how do I follow God's plan in this situation, in this situation, in this situation? Following God. I see that Asa, when he was faced with a difficult situation, made a deal with the enemy instead of seeking the Lord. Psalm 1 says that blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Who doesn't take the world's wisdom. The world's wisdom. What is the world? Well, the world is everything that is outside the kingdom of God. And I don't mean by kingdom of God, this church and what I say. If I say it's not right, then no. no. Talk about those things that are antithetical to, to the Lord. To what his revealed plan is in his word. And so often, Christians will face a situation and turn to, well, you know, I was watching Dr. Phil the other day. He had some great things to say. And then last night I was watching Oprah. And you know what? She's got a lot of good things to say. Well, whatever good she might have to say that is really good is only good because it happens to line up with what God's Word says. But why do we go here and there and somewhere else and read the paper and go buy a book and so forth instead of seeking this? Because this is everything that we need for life and godliness. It says that the, that the word is inspired. It's God-breathed. And it's good for teaching. It's good for correcting. It's good for reproving. It's it's. It's good for all of these things so that the man of God or woman of God may be thoroughly equipped. Thoroughly equipped. Not just equipped for religious kind of stuff. Not just equipped for, well, some stuff. Like, you know, what about smoking pot? I don't find anywhere in the scripture where it says, I can't smoke pot. I can't even find the word marijuana in here, in the Greek, in the Hebrew, any of it. It's not in here. And there was a time in my life before I was a believer where my plan, because I was an unbeliever and I was studying theology to stay out of Vietnam, that I figured in my church, communion is going to be... It's good. It's natural. I mean, it's not like taking a pill, right? It's natural. God made it, right? I'm just using it. The day I got saved and delivered from the drugs, including marijuana and the other drugs that I was totally messed up on, I went and I had a Bible in my house though I hadn't read it for years because I wasn't in school and the draft was over so I didn't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, I went and got a Bible and opened it up. And you know what I opened it up to? I opened it up to the book of Ephesians by chance where it says, do not be drunk with wine but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I realized it's the same thing. It's the principle that's involved there. Don't take external things to get your happiness. Don't use pot, don't use alcohol, don't use LSD, don't use heroin, don't use prescription medication, don't use the ginga boba whatever you can get at the local health food store. That Man, it's legal, but you're just piling it in there because it makes you feel good. 
No, don't fill yourself with those things in order to get the satisfaction that you're looking for in your life. Instead, be filled with God's Holy Spirit. You see, everything is covered right here. Everything. Everything. Why go somewhere else? <laughs> when Asa was criticized by the Lord for doing something wrong, instead of being humble and going, well, let's see, did I do something wrong? Well, yeah, I didn't rely on the Lord. Yeah, he really took care of that million man. Why? Yeah, boy. No, instead, what does he do? He throws the guy in prison. A lot of people do that too. They hear someone criticize what they, this, this, is, this is the way I'm going. And it's the Lord, it's the Lord's word coming to him. And they're going, man, I really hate that guy. That pastor, Kevin, he makes me feel so uncomfortable. I'm not going there anymore. It's not me, it's God's word. This is what it says. I'm trying to let you know what it says. Because we all, our tendency is to go the way that we think works. But the scripture tells us there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it, man, it's death. If I had stayed on the path I was on, not only would I not be here today, I wouldn't be anywhere on this planet today. I'm convinced. I was headed straight to death and I was headed straight to hell. There's no doubt about it. But God Almighty intervened and changed the direction. That's what He does in lives. He takes lives and He changes them. He molds them. He changes us. So my question to you is, what's God looking for? What's he looking for? Well, two thoughts come to mind. Number one is what the prophet told Asa. God's eyes are, the word literally is running to and for. Now that image is kind of weird of eyeballs running around looking, but his, his eyes are looking everywhere. He's looking for someone whose heart is loyal to me. Who's, who, is, who is looking towards me? Oh, there's one. Yeah. Let me show myself strong in that situation. Let me show myself strong in whatever situation you are in as you are seeking me. That's God's desire. That's what he wants to do. Awesome. The problem is we want, we're out of the yoke and we want God to bless our direction over here. Well, this is the way I should go. And why aren't you blessing me, God? Because I'm over here. Get in the yoke, buddy. <laughs> 